Welcome to Nerdo D and D, the Blail Flow Chronicles, Episode Two. I'm Dan, and I'm joined today by Dave, aka sounds like a Streets of Rage character. It's Dragonborn Draco Justice. Woo! Someone else could be some applause. Thank you. We have Reg, aka three and a half feet of towering ego. It's Mountain Dwarf Frank Bunty. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Steve slash Sean, also known as half Irish pop star, half single rail transportation system. It's Bono Rail. <laughs> and yours truly, a little bit sweet, a little bit sour in all the right measures. It's Lord Sugar. Hey. And not forgetting our dungeon master on loan from Summon Games. It's the one and only Doddy. How is everyone? <laughs> I uh, love that intro. Thank you. Good. I enjoyed that. Because I haven't said, but I want one of us each week to do that intro and give a little sort of summation of uh, of each character if you don't mind so uh yeah, right, let's say version. sean it's you next week listen Whoa. it reminded me a lot of when when i used to watch wwf back in the day um, although i think we should potentially hand over for doddy to doddy for the um uh, for the recap um yeah. But yeah, no, I enjoyed that. It was good. Well, well yeah. before we get started, though, we've, we had a, a complaint um, from one of our Dungeoneers. Uh, I was talking to Reg, and he felt really, really disappointed that he didn't get to read his entire character bio last week. <laughs> <laughs> he made it really short, and then I went and did like seven and a half paragraphs, so he, he couldn't go back. So if he'd like to, he's very welcome to maybe give a bit more info on uh, on exactly what he, he had in mind. Well, the, the thing is, you know me, I don't really like talking, but <laughs> seeing <laughs> seen as you put me on the spot. <clears throat> so the backstory of Frank Bunty. Frank was part of the army protecting the homeland under the guidance of his mentor and leader, Thoron Magnus Dottor. Frank, the protector of the people, a job which he did well, he was known throughout the land with the holy shield on his symbol a uh, holy symbol on his shield was heralded by the common folk of which he was in charge of their protection frank knew there was more he could be doing rather than guarding the perimeter of the city so he approached thorun and advised him of his worries and his belief that he could do more thorun advised he was swore to protect the land and it was his palladic duty as frank was ordered by his mentor he did what he was ordered stay protecting the lands until that fateful day the day of the war as the city was being raided by the enemy, Frank went back, back to back with Thoron, smiting the opposition in vast numbers. Suddenly, Frank felt a hand on his shoulder. As he turned, he could see Thoron with numerous arrows piercing through the armour, blood rushing out all over. Thoron's last words to Frank were, Win this war. Go seek your dream of travel and protection. <sighs> Upon Thoron's last breath, Frank's eyes welled. He vowed to his mentor that he would avenge the fallen and do as he wished. Smashing his shield with his axe and lighting up the symbol, Frank took the battle head on, decimating foes left and right, joining his allies as they drew the enemy forces away, restoring peace to the land. Years after the battle, Frank went to the grave of Thuron, regaled the tales of restoration to the land and the brightness of the town's future, and there he placed an arrowhead and a battle axe next to the headstone, explained that his role at home is now complete, said his goodbye to his old friend and mentor, grabbed the backpack, and began his journey to Neverwinter. That was my right, backstory. That, that was long. <laughs> that, that was, and my absolute favourite part was, until that day, the day of the war. <laughs> Which made me think like it was his most intense one-day war, and I was like, that sounds awesome. I want to hear more about the one-day war. I'll the one-day war, I, but it was called the six-month war because that's, <laughs> that's what they do with wars, right? They they get the time scale wrong. In oh yeah, it just feels like six months because it's you exactly know, war, I've war-y. Been, uh, I've been watching a lot of Garth Marenghi's Dark Place, so I wanted <laughs> of course my, uh, sure. I wanted my backstory to be <laughs> poorly written. Blood, his like blood, Garth Marenghi crimson <laughs> story in the beginning. Blood. Like so it. that was now. If you listen back after hearing that. Hopefully, that's the reason why it sounds so janky and weird. But yes. <laughs> well, I enjoyed it very much. Thank you. Thank and you. I do Thank feel you, better. Frank. Good. I'm glad. I'm glad you got that off your chest. I, I can't believe you sought me out there. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so, so any... yeah. Cut to commercial. Cut to commercial. I'm not ready. <laughs> uh, hello. Hi. 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 
So, you all gathered in Neverwinter, headed towards the harbour where you met your guide and mentor, Renek Armok. He said, Blailflow calls for aid after a cutter ship managed to break the misty veil of Blailflow, which has been surrounded by a misty veil for the last 15 years. You set sail. Upon piercing the veil, you were met by images that floated within the mist itself, which gathered together to form a column which hit the ship, and you all passed out. Dun dun dun! So we're dead. No. No. Not Sadly, dead. Sadly, not. I'm kind of disappointed, please. It would have been a really like, poor start to the second episode. I was like, but now we've got new yeah. characters. <laughs> I was like, why are they making me? Why are they making me record tonight? I thought we all died on that boat. <laughs> I'm not that mean of a, a DM. <laughs> it's like Beetlejuice. We didn't make it back from the shops. <laughs> well, all all it taught uh, Draco Justice was that he shouldn't uh, take boats. This was his first time on a boat. And it, ended <laughs> with, it ended with ghosts and unconsciousness. But if we'd have taken that airship, it would have been a lot worse. Yes. Maybe. Maybe. Or they could have flown right through. They could be there waiting for us. Like, what take you guys so long? So. <laughs> uh, you all start to come to. There's a ringing in your ears. Um, you feel a bit dizzy and nauseous. Um, but you manage to get to your feet. Hang on, hang on. I need to address this. Dottie, if we had taken the airship, would you have killed us in our first session? Crashing us into the sea with ghosts. Uh, <laughs> as stated in episode... I don't know if it's if you've kept it in episode one, but depending on which ship you boarded was depending on what happened. Right, okay. So you, <laughs> no, so you, you're, told, so you're, you told us that off pod. Uh, I told you so off pod. You're, you're refusing to confirm or deny whether you would have murdered the entire party in our first ever <laughs> session. Okay, good to know. Good to know, Daddy. Good to know. It was a one in five chance. It's fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're doing so well. But don't so, worry, because there's going to be another group of adventurers who are going to jump on to one of the other five ships that left. That's true. So we'll find out how they all did. Mm. Yeah. We'll get there. One will, they'll have just had a, a massive feast with suckling pig. And <laughs> bottles of whiskey all around, it and everyone will be super happy. The other one will have gold chains around their, their necks, and like, oh, we just stumbled across this ghost ship that had treasure on it. <laughs> and then us like, oh yeah, we we got knocked out, and then had our kidneys stolen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not going to be like that, is it? Oh, well, I'm waiting. Charlie for the that. unicorn. Charlie. <laughs> <laughs> I am See, um, you guys it. took my spleen. <laughs> The first thing I do want to do, though, seeing as we're feeling a bit like oh, nauseous and, and not very well, I um, I turn to Bonnerell and just like, Wait, do you have any um, a, a, any grass on you, mate? Because I heard that's good for digestion when you're feeling a bit nauseous. <laughs> Before I address that, that's... have we just woken up? Yes. Yes. Okay. So move along, Steve. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> hey, uh, I'm going to do an unarmed strike. Got, if we've got any. Can I do an unarmed strike, please? If you want. Perfect. If Frank Frank Bunty will murder you. You do that, right? You'll punch him, and he'll do more damage to you with your punch. I'm just going to go for a square slap across the face, woman style. What if it, are you style. are you intending to just do damage, or are you just as a I warning, like, oi, don't do it again? You can't do damage. It's zero on arm strike. <laughs> All right. Yeah, Reg, I wouldn't worry too hard. She could start railing on you, and you'd be like, "What? What is this? What's going on?" <laughs> There's a strong breeze out today. What's happening? Uh, okay. You, no, don't. He's, don't. He don't listen to this fool. He's obviously not going to punch Frank Bunty for saying that. Come on. <laughs> well, it's just going to be a gentle right. slap across the face. No, I really am. <laughs> so what do I roll? Yeah. So it's roll a d20 uh, plus your uh, dex. Uh, 15 plus 1, 16. 16. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Reg. Uh, and my... <laughs> my armor class is 18, mate. So <laughs> <like fails. laughs> my damage... Yeah. Hang on, my damage is 0. Oh, you missed. You missed. You missed. Anyway. Yeah, you you uh, actually yeah. missed. So, um, so I just see that sack going right pasteurized. <clears throat> yeah, it is dizzy, nauseous confusion. He tries to quickly slap you. 
uh, and just it's, it's miles off. You just lean back slightly, just so it doesn't connect. <laughs> I'm gonna carry on. I'm gonna carry on glaring at him angrily. <laughs> I was really hoping that you were gonna walk away, and then Rich could launch a, a reactionary attack on you. <laughs> yeah, and I just just want to say, Bonnerell, that's absolutely bull. The fact that you just tried to attack me oh. first. <laughs> oh, he's doubling down. Ten he's doubling down, team. I'm not saying anything. I'm just glaring at him. Okay. Uh, Right. You guys are just all going on about slapping each other and making cow jokes. I just want to know what the heck has happened. We've just, yeah, sorry, moving on to the actual been, story now. <laughs> how long yeah. have we been passed out for? Where are we? What's going on? The same question you, I had earlier. Are all boats like this? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're still on course. The aisle that you can see that you saw previously is still in front of you. Uh, the, from the distance... It was mere seconds, maybe a minute. You've been out. Oh, okay, that's good. Few. Um, uh, all our belongings still with us. All your belongings are still with you. Uh, you see the crew are getting back to their feet. They're shaking it off and getting back to work as quickly as possible. Uh, you see the captain um, come to the top of the deck, shaking her head, like looking a bit tired. Like she's just come out of a, a, a small power nap, um, and she's headed towards uh, the bow. I, I announced to the captain as she passes by, "Dude, how long before you get used to this? This, this happens every journey. Uh, <laughs> this has never happened before. Not normal." Oh, I see. Uh, I I just assumed. I I haven't been on a boat before. <laughs> <laughs> you keep uh, saying you, you carry on talking to her, but she is walking, power walking past you, and she's barking orders left, right, and centre, and she's demanding that like, they just get to shore as quickly as possible. In defence to Draco Justice, not one person has said no. This isn't normal until this point. <laughs> <laughs> you keep saying, "Is it always like this?" And everyone's like, mm. <laughs> "Are there are there always ghosts?" <laughs> they've they've now disappeared, if I remember correctly. They're, hundreds of spirits in the go so are they still surrounded us they've gone you are uh past the veil veils the veil seems like it's further away than what it should have been so what can we what can we actually do here because like the ghosts are gone can we maybe go and follow where the captain's going to see what's going down you can do yeah i'm gonna i'm uh, i mean I don't know about you guys, but I think we should follow the captain. Yeah, that's fine. I, I'd, I'd jump up and follow the captain. Okay. Uh, you get to your feet. You head on over to the captain. Uh, if you could roll me a perception check. Perception. All right, everyone. Everyone can make me a perception check on this one. Uh, just four. Four. Okay, don't see anything out of the ordinary. 20. 20? Mm. 12. Perception. Oh, hang on. Perception plus, plus two. Oh, minus two. Ten. <laughs> yeah, I've got ten plus two, twelve. Twelve, no. So, Draco. You see, everyone is working hard. Everyone is finding their feet. Uh, the adventuring groups have come topside. All their numbers are there. You look around and you start to see that all the crews there bar one is missing that is molly oh, which one was molly was that the perky girl that was the perky girl oh no me and her were tight yep uh okay i'm gonna so tight you didn't even know her name <laughs> so while it's, everyone it's is a... is while everyone's following the captain as draco notices this he's not going to bring a lot of attention to it he's going to head below deck and see if he can see her mm. or find her. But I'm going to let everyone else keep walking the way they are because I don't want to draw attention to the fact that I'm like, where is this girl? Okay, you've told us that's where you're going, though. We'll, we'll let you do that. It's a good plan. Mm-hmm. Where, where, uh, whereabouts Oswald? Oswald? Mm. Who was Oswald? He was, uh, the, he was the dude, the deckhand that I was... Oh, gosh. And spoke right. to last time around. That's right. Well, the guy who liked the cut of your jib. Cut of your jib. Reg has made uh, notes. Uh, well done, Reg. <laughs> Oswald is with the navigator at the stern of the ship. Okay. Can I 
walk over to, to Oswald and just make sure all is good and just ask, what the hell was that? Okay, so you're going Oswald, uh, Dave's going below deck, Sean, you're going towards the captain. Yeah. I'm just going to keep a lookout. Dan, you would keep a lookout. Uh, roll me a perception, Dan. Oh, wait one second. Oh, it's a lovely day. Lovely. <laughs> I have a weather dice, so it's amazing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> wow. I just thought you were planning something really evil because you oh, rolled the dice around. Oh, a lovely day. <laughs> it's a lovely day. It's like, we're so screwed. <laughs> I can't Am even roll in my d20. It. It's amazing. Yes, plus your perception, please. Plus perception. Uh. Do I have a... Come on, dice, where are you? Roll, roll, roll. A 13 plus perception to 15. 15. Okay. You notice it a bit after what I'm about to explain happens. Just a little bit. Okay. So, Sean, over to you. You head towards yes. where the captain is at the bow of the ship. As you get there... Um, the captain turns around and she, <laughs> not forcefully but she just grabs the side of your head to move out of the way and she screams brace for impact what? Uh, as, got... as she pulls you off to her, what would be her left, your right you can see there is something under the water barreling towards the ship shit, and okay Dan, so I noticed it as well yeah, as you're looking out to port side, you start to look towards the front and you can see this as well. Is there anything I can grab onto? The ship. Uh, okay, I grab onto the ship. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know my my armor spell, mage armor? Yes. Can, is that big enough to encompass the ship? No, that's a uh, okay. self. I like oh. your thinking though. Doddy, yeah. I actually, I have a plus five in uh, 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 acrobatics, so can I not just... Brace to maybe do some crazy, crazy flip when Fuck the off. when when the ship gets it. <laughs> to sort of like, oh, I I so I mean, want what, you to what, do this, and I so want you to there? roll a one so <laughs> you can <laughs> flip into the air, and the ship is not underneath you Man anymore. So you just fall in the sea. Okay. So what you're doing now is you're preparing an action for when if the ship is hit, yeah. you're, gonna, you're gonna try and use an acrobatic skill to go the into the motion. Damage. Avoid damage. Yeah. yeah, yeah. To go into the motion of it to steady yourself. Yeah, that's fine. Um, so I, I, I basically do like a maneuver that looks a bit like um, looks a bit like Jet from Gladiator, like sort of down on the floor, arms out, ready to go. Okay. <laughs> God, I so want you to roll a one. I so yeah. want to see what happens. <laughs> He's also You're below deck. You're not the rest of my life. So. Reg, as soon as you get to Oswald, this is gonna happen. Sorry. Okay. So as about as you as, as you're about to talk to Oswald, Oswald looks at you and looks at what's coming, and you both hear the warning shout, and you look out and see this coming towards you. It veers off. Uh, will be the wind. Veers, veers off to the right. Oh, okay. uh, but the waves will hit the ship, so I need everyone to make me a dexterity saving throw. Uh, uh, that's in the. If you're using D and D Beyond, top left in the saving throw box, you can just click oh, on your sh deck. shit. I One plus see. three, four. Oh, I see. Nineteen. You click on it, and it just rolls. How yeah. clever. Uh, Fourteen. 14. Twelve. Twelve. <laughs> okay. Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Dave, as you go right into the sea, uh, Dave, as you go below deck, you end up uh, swaying into one of the unoccupied bedrooms. It's probably where I'd want to be anyway at this moment. Yep. Tucked up under the duvet. Uh, <laughs> Reg, what did you get? Nineteen. Nineteen. Uh, you're fine. You managed to keep hold of the banister that's up top deck. Uh, Dan, you manage to grab hold of the side of the ship and keep hold. You are on the right side, so you you will see this, and I'll explain to you what it is in a second. Go on. This is tense. <laughs> Barely saved, but you had a readied skill available. Yeah. 
So, uh, it says acrobatics plus five. Does that help? If you roll a d20. Uh, 18 plus five. Oh, damn. Okay. <laughs> he didn't get an 18. He got an eight, and then he was like, shit, hang on. An 18. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just going to write on the screen. Pull on that. <laughs> for, for what it's worth, what what I don't want Bonnerail to die. I wanted to see what <laughs> Dottie had in mind for a critical failure. It would have been spectacular. Oh, he would have been overboard. <laughs> 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 Do I need to send you guys a screenshot? <laughs> no. Too late now. You've had plenty of time to keep rolling until you it's, get that number. <laughs> it says... My God. So, as it hits, Sean, you go over the edge, but you manage to do a quick twist in the air. Like, you leave the ground, crazy the free, and then you just... Stillness of your mind, body and soul, and you're like, I've got this. And then you just reach and you grab the side of the ship. And now you're hanging in a comfortable position over the side. Bottom rail's got moves. In a slow motion, he just goes, parkour. <laughs> she. You're, you're she. on the same okay. side as this creature that you can see. It is huge. It is three times the length of the ship. Jeez. And it is twice as thick. It has tentacles coming off the back of it. And it has claws and mandibles at the front. Is it also a ghost? No, this is very... Damn. Weird. Damn. Listen, guys, uh, I don't know about you, but I've got experience of handling something this big. <laughs> for fuck's sake. Is it your bank balance? <laughs> Thanks for ruining my punchline there. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I genuinely just thought you were boasting. <laughs> well, either way. <laughs> Can I please jump back in the ship, please? <laughs> Maybe yeah, to get get myself some some higher ground. You can get back on the ship quite easy with the roll you had. All right. Um, I'll help you guys out. You can do a check on this one to see if you know what this is. Okay. I'm, I'm underneath. I can't see anything. What um what kind of checker is it? Perception or is it investigation or? Get my. Is it is it a nature if it's an animal? <laughs> history, this one. Lol, I said that, and I pressed three. I'm plus five on history. Sweet, I'm minus two. So, <laughs> for what it's worth, I'm glad I'm not making the check because I just rolled a critical failure. Me I wasn't too, doing right? anything, so it's all right. Uh, I'm on to six. Fifteen plus five, twenty. What do you? Uh, this is a kraken. I knew it was a kraken. Yeah. <laughs> So obviously a kraken. <laughs> is, that what, is that what Lord Sugar shouts? Oh, no, no, it's obviously come a on. kraken. Come on, this is what happens. Look, this this does happen every time you get on a boat. <laughs> Just so you know, <laughs> it's always a flipping kraken. Uh, it is a kraken. It is a gargantuan monstrosity. Oh shit! I rolled a d8 for that check. It's everybody can. <laughs> what not? Silly man. Uh, it is pretty much a titan, and these served as fierce warriors of the gods themselves. Oh. So, exactly the kind of thing that a group of level one characters should definitely take on, right? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you, you, you love love loads. So, I'm by the captain right now, aren't I? Mm-hmm. So, can I not ask him what the fuck we're going to do? Um... She's trying to remain com- composed, right? Uh, and she says to you, uh, "One should not be this close to a sh- to a shoreline at all." Uh, mm. And then she just leaves you at the front, and she's barking orders to get to the sh- uh, shoreline as quickly as possible. <clears throat> right. Uh, I'm going to ask if there's anything I can do to help. Uh, she says, "Yes, come with me." Okay, I follow. <laughs> She's going to sacrifice you to the I thought, I thought she was going to say, <laughs> could you just kill the Kraken? <laughs> uh, so who's at top deck? Uh, Sean and Dan, you see they're dropping sails. She grabs you, Sean, to hold onto a... Uh, like a didgeridoo-looking device. I love a didgeridoo. I'm on, didgeridoo. I'm on it. Uh, so there's you and two others holding it. Uh, one of them activates it and it acts like a gust of wind spell so it's 
pushing the sails out, gaining you speed. Cool. Slick. Cool. Slick. Uh, Helping. I think. Reg. Mm -hmm. um, you're up top with Oswald and the Navigator. Uh, yep. Oswald's hands are shaking a little bit. And so is the Navigator as he's <laughs> scrabbling to take his maps. Okay, so I'll go up to Oswald and the Navigator and just be like, are you guys okay? And it's like, don't worry about this. We are going to get out of this. What can I do to help? Uh, so where are you? Uh, Oswald is um, focused on what he's doing. Um, the navigator says he can help me gather, gather up these, help me gather up the notes and take them below deck. Okay. That's what I will do. I will gather the notes. Okay, you have the notes. Draco! Well, I'm going to obviously get to my feet and continue looking for Molly, because although I want to see what's happening on top of the deck, I'm, as far as I'm concerned, it was a big wave, and it's like, oh, okay, get back on my feet. Um, <laughs> and then I, I will, yeah, just have a look down here and see if I can find her. No idea that there's a Kraken knocking on the door. Nope, no idea. <laughs> I've been on a boat Bliss. before. Blissfully aware. <laughs> Never heard of a Kraken. <laughs> I really hope. I really hope that we get this sorted before Dave's character realizes. Just so he's like, is this normal? <laughs> <laughs> never, never even seen a big fish before, let alone a Kraken. <laughs> like, oh, it's awfully, it's awfully is turbulent a, in this water. Is this where tuna comes from. <laughs> um, right. So you obviously you're in a empty uh, bed bunk room. Mm -hmm. uh, you leave that and turn right. You see there's all the rooms are, are have been emptied and everyone's gathered all their items um you get to the end of the corridor uh it goes down another level and that is where the storage area is all right i'm gonna call out for molly see where she is i don't mean drugs <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> oh god why are you giggling? What have I done? You, <laughs> you hear a child's voice <laughs> turn around to you. Is she's not here? Who? Who? Hello? Who is this child? <laughs> you hear it again, and it's coming from behind you. Oh God! <laughs> oh Jesus! Okay. Uh, well, I mean. Let's face it, Draco's not spent a lot of time outside of the monastery, so he doesn't know what to be scared of. So he's just gonna like, he's just gonna, just gonna turn around and be like, What was this voice I'm talking to? Uh before you floating a few inches off the ground is a ghost like figure of a very young uh lady. Child like ghost. <laughs> God <laughs> oh, okay. Jesus Christ. I don't like this already. <laughs> That's terrifying. Okay. Um, uh, right, well, I'm, I I just will say, what? where is she? I'm going to stay as calm as possible. Do you know where she is? Uh, she left. She had a better offer. Oh my God. <laughs> I don't left. want to play anymore. <laughs> this is really creepy. I know, we wait years to play it, and now I'm like, I don't want to continue this adventure. <laughs> really and um, and I'm sat here in the dark. What's your name? Uh, <laughs> Maria. Maria, wh when you say she left, what, what do you mean? When they came, the other spirits, they made a, an offer. Did you not hear them? They offered it to everyone. I'm surprised you didn't hear them. I heard them. Were you with them? No. I look after the ship. This is my ship. Me and Daddy live on the ship. Ooh. Okay. Um, Daddy steers the ship sometimes. 
god. Did... So Molly wanted to go with them? Well, they made an offer. Mm, that's not Did you not same. get an offer? I don't know of an offer. Uh, oh. Let's see. Is everyone else aware that you're here, Maria? The crew are. Oh, good. <laughs> oh, good. Oh, good. Oh, good. <laughs> they didn't mention that when we were signing up, of course. That why would they? Um, there's a scary ghost child who lives <laughs> around the deck. Um, <laughs> um, See, I can't. At this point, I can't like make suggestions to Dave as to what to ask because I don't know what's going on. No, because right? we're no. not. There. Yeah. yeah, we're not there, so we have no idea. <laughs> um, I'm not sure where to go with this because she seems fine, <laughs> as fine as a ghost child can be. Maybe um, that's Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> she's a, you're funny looking. What are you? I think I, I'm told I'm a dragonborn, although I've never met another one. Oh, I've never seen one. I've heard of them. Never they they you they're usually bigger. I'm. <laughs> Draco's got a complex. He's a he's a run <laughs> yeah. runny dragonborn. Um, <laughs> but they're bigger than you. Yeah, yeah, I know they're, they're, they are quite impressive. Um, do you? Well, I don't. I don't even know what to ask here. Um, can you speak to her? From I where speak she to is? Who? Molly. To Molly. Um, I I don't want to speak to her anymore. Why not? She, she when she made a choice, she hit her. Well, you know. You know when someone gives you some treats, she's more inclined to take them from you, angrily, with a dagger. She did have a lot of daggers. I'm going to miss her. Jesus. Okay. Um, (coughs) I think... If I'm honest, I think Draco's about ready to tap out and go and tell someone else about this. So, uh, you can hear footsteps coming down, and she looks over her shoulder. I've got to go now. Mm-hmm. Pl- pleasure speaking with you. <laughs> I just didn't like with you. I didn't like that. Just but tell your friend to be careful. Molly likes him, and she will come find him. And she <laughs> giggles as she <laughs> descends with floorboards. Come find him. <laughs> Which which have you made closest friends with Molly? Me, well, Bonnerail, but she she said he. Bonnerail's a lady. Oh, sorry, lady. Sorry, she. Oh, okay. okay. Right, sorry, right, my right. mistake. <laughs> so Molly's oh, no, so real well, cool. Yeah, I know, it's down, right? Bonnerail. Get okay. Steve, huh? <laughs> okay. Well, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna thank young Maria for her time. Say it was a pleasure to meet her. Uh, <laughs> do, you, do you see what so high fiving right. people does? <laughs> <laughs> gets Reg, you into trouble. Reg, you and the navigator get to the same floor as where Draco is, and you can hear him having a conversation going, Thank you very much. <laughs> it's been a pleasure meeting you. Okay. But there's, yeah. there's just him there. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn, notice that it's the navigator and, and Frank, and say, Does every boat have ghosts? <laughs> <laughs> I just like go ghosts. Who who are you speaking to? What 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 what's it happened? Uh, the navigator is going to go down to the storage area. Oh, that that's Maria. She looks after the ship. Uh, um, yeah. Uh, long story. Right. Um, okay. So friendly ghost. Uh, as long as you don't have harmful intentions towards the ship, yeah, yeah, you're fine. Cool. I just say to um, I just say to Draco that I've got some important documents I just need to uh, to put in deck. I'll come back up and get you. That sounds like an excuse. I've got some important <laughs> documents. Uh, I can't talk. Sorry. Um, <laughs> Very busy and important. Bye. <laughs> I'm just going to boat business. You wouldn't know anything oh, about also, it. Also, just before you go up, um, huge warning and spoiler for you. There's a giant kraken on deck. See you in a minute. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> <laughs> okay, bye. See you later. <laughs> Drake is going to make his way to the deck while saying to himself, "What's a kraken? What, what is a kraken? Does every boat have a kraken?" <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> this is going to be the uh, end of the At the end of this, this ship, it, it goes down to another deck and it's just filled with crates and barrels. <laughs> um, the navigator has his own work area set out with various maps uh, pinned to the side of the ship. Okay, so if I can um, just ask what what's the plan, where you plan on taking us then, and start looking at the maps and just be like, how are we going to get out of this? Uh, the plan is to make it to the shoreline as quickly as possible. Uh, make a dock and find out what the hell's going on. Okay, so what can I do to, to help then? Need, need one of these maps? Like, need me back on board? How, how can I help? Uh, we're going to go run upstairs um and in fact stay with me we can assess any damage downstairs down where we are okay do you, you would not prefer me upstairs where the giant kraken is I, i'll happily how about down here no i'm still okay. just not not very good in water <laughs> he smiles and looks back at you says, if the kraken had hit us uh we'd be taking on water right now and there'd be a lot of scream <laughs> jesus okay cool i'm with you then so, uh, with you and him, if you could make me do... Uh, what's your God, perception bonus? going to murder me, isn't he? My perception bonus is minus two. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're going to give him advantage. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, this is better than yours. He's going to murder me, isn't he? You say that about everybody. Yeah, I love he's the paranoia. just asked me to roll perception, <laughs> and then says, "Yeah, he's got the advantage." It's not going to be like a nice. Oh, we just check to see what's going on. It's going to be a case of he's going to shank me while we're downstairs. Um, but do make me one perception check. Oh God. Okay, so fourteen minus two, twelve. Twelve. Uh, as you are getting to uh, halfway down the ship from where you are uh, out of the left corner of your eye uh, you see like a misty veil just pass your eyesight about ten foot away from you right okay so I'm going to leave you with that (laughs) Uh, over to Dan and Sean, Lord Sugar and Honor. We're not, we're not close though, are we? You we're are all deck. both on top deck. Oh, right. Am I still holding that thing? Yeah, you're holding the gust of wind. Okay, then I carry on helping holdingly. Okay. Lord Sugar. Hi. Hi. Is there anything you wish to do to assist, to help? Uh, a lot of people are just tying off barrels, crates. Okay, just preparing for the potentially imminent attack. <laughs> um, yeah, I have a look around to see if there's anything that needs my attention. Roll me a perception check. Okay, perception... Uh, 21. Oh, Oof. <clears throat> <laughs> you can see the Kraken's thoughts. <laughs> um, okay, so. Where are you on the right hand side of the ship? Yes. Uh, towards the front sticking to the right hand side about 15 foot in front of you uh, one of the boards is giving off like a glimmery shine to it which looks uh, kind of magical in nature right you know, if you see it, like, it looks kind of uh, like like gold or something yeah it's like a, a sparkly right. dust floating towards the sky I'm on it <laughs> you head on over if you could do me a <coughs> either an investigation or arcana check. Uh, investigation on plus five on. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, do uh, what? What's it when you roll a twenty? It's a critical. It's a critical roll. <laughs> I, I just get a critical roll plus five. Nice. Twenty five. Not twenty. Boom. Not twenty. That's it. I knew I'd heard something like that. <laughs> okay. 
So, um, what you get from your investigation as you're studying this, um, someone has put a spell on part of the ship, which acts like a law. Uh, you've seen it used, hunters use it on uh, traps to hunt bigger, more dangerous game that's in the wild. Mm, big, like as in krakens. Uh, you pretty much, say a ranger, a group of rangers were going out to tackle uh, a nest of owl bears. <laughs> sure. uh, they, they tend to, would have used more of a bigger lure to attract them. Okay, and is this this thing that is imbued with this magical law power? Can I remove it? Is it movable? Uh, it is not. No, not without a dispel magic. Okay. Well, it looks like someone has deliberately cast it on this area. Right. I mean, I figured as much. Someone. Right. Everyone, I want everyone's attention. I mean, uh, I don't think people can hear you. I'm shouting at the can top I... of my lungs. I'm Lord Sugar. Everyone hears me. Who hears him? <laughs> everyone. Everyone who's on top deck. Everyone, who, oh, everyone on top deck can hear him. All right. Someone, and I want to know who, <laughs> put a magical law spell on this bit of wood here, and that's what's attracting this kraken. Now, I won't be having any of it, and I want whoever's done it to own up right now. So I use my persuasion. I'm going to roll for a persuasion to see if that convinced anyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? Uh, Doddy? No? It's the way you said it. It is more of an intimidate. Okay, intimidation. <laughs> uh, <laughs> six. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, but when I find out... <laughs> no one... Everyone just kind of goes back to work, but <laughs> as you say, if you roll me a, you did intimidate. Uh, you roll me, you roll me a per, uh, perception. So this is to see if anyone flinched. Uh, Flinch, yeah. You're reading people's body 17. language. Seventeen. Seventeen. Uh, Seventeen. Uh, nope. You don't notice anyone. Honestly, did the captain hear that? By the way, yeah, the captain. Uh, Why, you see, she's scowling out across the group. So, people are concerned that there is that someone has done something to make this kraken come to find us, right? Yeah, everyone is looking at each other's groups. Yeah. As, it sounded uh, like people were just like, "Eh, back to work." So, Dan basically stirred the pot, is what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Uh, the crew know they've got an important job to do. Uh, but the captain is scowling out across every group, or even her own crew. She is giving the glare. Am I still supposed to be holding onto this rope? Captain, do I still need to hold onto this rope? Uh, for the next ten minutes, yes. All right. We'll, we'll slow down and make uh, make for the harbour. Okay, I'm going to carry on doing that. I've been completely useless <laughs> apart. <laughs> you hold a rope. Uh, <laughs> don't worry, this, this is going to be... about to be shanked and murdered by the navigator. Last <laughs> episode, I'd fucking rob the place blind. This episode, I'm holding a rope. Yeah, don't worry. Don't worry. Things, things are going to lead somewhere. Yeah. Reg, blow deck. Uh, you finished doing your quick checks. There doesn't seem to be any damage at all okay so I uh, is the navigator with me or is he at a different part under deck to have a look around just do I need to inform him that I've done the checks or is he with me he's, he's, he's with you right okay so I'll turn to the navigator after I see through the uh, the little porthole in the, the window the misty veil and it's like do you see that and it's like that's what we when we come through that this is and this is when all this started happening. We had the ghosts. We had the we got the kraken. And like, are we are we nearing this again? Is this coming towards us, or is it getting further away? Should be getting further away. Right. Okay. So how? 
what how 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 do we how do we proceed? Are we are we going to be able to get to, to the shore? Do you think? I think we'll get to the shore. <laughs> I'm not too sure if we're going home. <laughs> okay. Um, I mean, in terms, he, he laughs that comment off quite nervously. <laughs> in in terms of this misty veil, vale, have have you passed through these previously, or is this the is this the first? Uh, I think with well, technically with the second. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's okay. It's just I'm intrigued to know if this is always what happens, or is it always something different that happens, or or what what the situation is. We've never come across one of these before. No, never have we. Normally, it's a fog cloud, and you just bear with it. But that, I've never encountered that. Okay, time to get dubious. <laughs> so, um, in terms of what we need to do now, since so below deck is is fine, should we go back up and see what we can do to aid and assist in the air? Up deck. Um, yeah, I'm just going to grab a few things because I'm going to head out to uh, head into the town as soon as we get there, and I'm going to see what maps I can pick up. Okay, I I don't trust this navigator, so I will. Um, I'd be like, sure, I'll, I'll give you a hand if you need some stuff to take up top. Four hands are better than two. I'll come with. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, he heads over to his work desk, reaches underneath, and pulls out two. Uh, empty scroll cases, he makes sure that they're empty and puts them on his person uh, and he takes from a drawer a bag, uh, a bag, a belt pouch with money and ties it to his uh, belt. So he's getting ready to set off. He does, to, he does he not seem bothered that there is all of this going on. He's just like, right, I want to make money. Something's Something's not quite right. <laughs> Your paranoia is amazing. <laughs> can I? It, it's insight, isn't it? If I wanted to just do a quick scope out at him and just see what's going on. Go for it. Okay, so. Oh, I'll take that 20. Not 20. Thank you very much. Um. He is a little shaken by what's happening, but at the same time, there is a huge peak of excitement that <laughs> he he can't wait to get ashore and do what he needs to do. From his mannerisms and what he's done, and the amount of pride he's took in his little workstation and below, uh, you get the feeling that he lives for this sort of work for sailing for investigating for traveling to find hidden hot spots to just go on adventures and this is what he he's in his element he's loving it right so there's nothing shady going on he's just very excited about the prospect of of this yeah right okay cool let's go on that. right sorry i'll i'll let him carry on grabbing his maps then <laughs> Maps. Uh, he takes out a hip flask from the uh, drawer as a swig and <laughs> he offers it to you nice I'll um, I'll grab it uh, do I check it no I'll just I'll, 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 I'll have a swig I'll say thanks very much take a, a huge hit uh, from the flask and pass it back and be like cool that's the good stuff. Yeah, uh, this stuff is, y you're thinking it's homemade. It's very potent and burn <laughs> burning the back of your throat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just like the stuff back home. Ah, this is better. He fastens it off, puts it back in the drawer, and he runs, well, not runs, but quickly paced, heads back upstairs. Okay. Is there, it seems that we're below deck and we've got the um, the the port win, port holes or whatever they're called, the windows in a boat. Yeah. Um, can I can I see anything relating towards the Kraken while I'm looking out at these windows? Which side are you going for? Um, he was at the right hand side, wasn't he? So if I can have a look at the right hand side, I'm uh, see if I can see like distance away he is. Is he is he still right by us? Is there anything that you know? How far away we are from the land? Can I see anything at all? From where you are, off in the distance, 
and a back right, uh, you uh, you can see. Um, I don't think the best way to describe it. It's uh, you see the bob coming up and down, and it is big as it's heading away from you. Right. Okay. So, so the kraken is getting away from us. Yeah. So it doesn't want to attack us. Right. Okay. Cool. Um, okay. Perfect. So I'll, I'll, I'll turn to the navigator and just be like, "It's fleeing quickly. Let's get upstairs." Okay. Uh, you and the navigator head back upstairs. Okay, so in relation towards where we are on the boat now, would we come up closer to um, Lord Sugar or would we be closer to Bonnera? Uh It's one way in and out. Uh, so you would head up. You'd be closer to uh, Bonnerail. Cool. So I'll come out and just be like, nice did you redo. <laughs> <laughs> um, time passes by and the uh, gentleman with you uh, Bonorail deactivates the item and takes it away to put it into storage. You're a lot closer towards the land now. You're heading towards a very large harbour. Um, off to your left you can see um, just jagged rocks that just look crazy deformed rocks. Uh, and from there you can see many whirlpools throughout it there are wrecked ships there I mean that looks nice and lovely and safe guys <laughs> it really does not who, who was it who said we shouldn't take the flying ship <laughs> <laughs> I, I, the general consensus was that you said don't do that Right, okay. it's going to get us murdered. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, to be I, fair, there's no place in bets. <laughs> yes, yeah, true. So, you know, it, it figures the bets that uh, turned you away from it. Mm. <laughs> okay, so uh, what, wait, that's 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 to the left, did you say? That's over towards the left, and the and then to the right is the kraken. To the right, back behind you, yeah, you can see the kraken. Oh, wait, okay, so we, we're parallel to the shore. Yeah. Right, okay. Um, so, I mean, can we just sail around the uh, the coast a little bit until we find somewhere without jaggedy rocks and whirlpools? Uh, the jaggedy rocks and whirlpools are way over to your left. You, you can see the spray of water, the, the, the rocks... It looks like it's in its own current, and you are caught in the current, which is taking you towards the harbour. Real. Okay. Ship proceeds. Uh, the dock, you come to a huge harbour, which is various different sized uh, docking ports. Uh, the smaller ones are obviously for the fishing. Uh, medium ones are for the trading goods. Uh, you're arriving at one of the larger, more stable uh, docks that you're coming in it's mostly made out of stone uh, in the distance you can see a large town in front of you uh, on the uh, harbour itself uh, you can see uh, there is a silver car carriage uh, sorry, silver and purple carriage pulling up from what would be your left and on the right hand side is a gold and black carriage pulling in from the right. Each one is followed by soldiers with similar armour matching the carriages. Okay. If we want to check, would we recognise the the colour of the, the armour so we know who it is that would be sort of in the carriage? Would we be aware of that? That would be... History. Okay. History check. Um, I don't have a great history, guys. I've got plus way. five, so I'm going to do it. You do it. Uh, 19. 19. So, you have the Malice family. Are they in the, the silver, are they? They are in the silver and purple. 
um, these are the stories you've heard that the Malice family have uh, were the ones that set up uh, this town of Bullport it's the town you're headed to um, and then the gold ones it's uh, the Lightfoot family okay. are they like royal heirs or what, what, what are the Lightfoot family uh, the Lightfoots are predominantly elven uh, where the Malice family tends to be uh, human or half elf and so, these both work together to operate the town. Ah, uh, right. Okay, so they're they're both the uh, like the, the the mayors or whatever of the town. Yes, the royal family. Okay. Okay. Well, should we go and introduce ourselves? I think it would be rude not to, sir. I mean, first of all, I just want to get off this boat. <laughs> Definitely. I uh, I jump off and just sort of put my kneel down and put my hand in the in the sand of the shore just He's crush it and be like ah, it's good to be back on Grotland that's it that'd be cool well you know in their sand <laughs> damn it <laughs> uh, you the ship pulls in uh, the lines are thrown overboard and they're tied off and you make your way onto the uh, stone rocks <laughs> bottom rail I, I I don't enjoy ships <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't wish to. Do we have to take one back? I mean, <laughs> anyone would think it was your first time. I. They're not. Are they? No one has been clear. Are they always like this? How do people live on these? How do they live on ships? There are ghosts, and there are monsters. Wait, have you I, told us about the ghosts yet? I. Did we? Did we not speak of the ghost? Oh, no. it was a ghost. <laughs> What? <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell us later. Let's just find out what's going on. <laughs> just for the record, the what? Kraken did nothing to us. Well, he shit us up a bit. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just, you know, fair enough. Um, it, I think it, it's I something. Something happened. There's there's something going on on that boat where you completely missed out on. Someone put that tracker on there. I'm sure it's a navigator. And composite. The fact that he seems so excited by the whole like living for the adventure did not seem asked about anything like that in the slightest. Mm. I'm afraid of anything. I, I missed something when I was with him, and it really yeah. annoyed me. But well, once once we're off the boat, what, you know, I'm, I'm yeah, I'm I'm curious if this is going to come back to haunt us. Uh, you head towards the uh, where the carriages are on the uh, on the harbour. Uh, you see two gentlemen exit the carriages like in sync not in sync in sync yeah. uh, and they head to flank you one would be on the left one would be on the right uh, and the retinue of guards are standing by protecting the area um, you head on over the, the gentleman who is a half elf on the left dressed in silver and purple Regalia uh, introduces himself says, "I am Corvix Malus," and this, and it, the other gent interrupts straight away and goes, "I am Andros Lightfoot. Welcome to Bullport." That <laughs> is where we shall leave it for this episode. Oh, interesting. I, I genuinely believe that when he says they start flanking us, I was like, "Oh, are yeah. we, are we going over. to get chucked in jail straight away?" <laughs> oh my God, really came here to help. So far, we've <laughs> been attacked by ghosts on a boat, yep. with a cracking gals, and before we can even step foot into a town, we just get arrested. But <laughs> thankfully, not. Not that was a that's a good episode. I enjoyed that, that, that quite a lot. Absolutely, I like yeah. it. I, I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad we're off the boat. Mm. I'm glad we <laughs> dodged the uh, the the bullet that was the kraken. But I'm really curious where the where the heck Millie's gone? What this ghost's all about? Wasn't uh, it Molly? Molly, yeah. uh, Molly, Molly, was it? Yeah, Molly. You know, I wonder where Molly went. The, yeah, yeah, the what little girl. Like, like, who's the dad as well? Because apparently the dad steers the ship. Mm. There's, there's so much about that boat that I think yeah. we could have easily dragged it out <laughs> a lot longer just for some of the uh, some of the stuff that was going on. Like, I, well. Maybe we will find out next week. 
Mm. All the evidence is that Draco just needs to explain it. <laughs> <laughs> Draco just just knows. <laughs> Once Draco explains it, Frank will be like, "Oh my god, I know who it is." <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let, let's let's call it a day then. Uh, <laughs> thank you once again guys yes thank you, Doddy for taking us uh, on this journey yeah Have thanks DM, DM. Yeah. And we thanks for not shanking us and murdering us straight away <laughs> well you know uh, we're only episode 2 and I'm pretty sure <laughs> episode 3 maybe 4 you'll uh, start encountering some 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 bad guys brilliant I'll wait for well well thank you very much everyone it has been a blast Yep. I really enjoyed it. Yep. So we'll uh, very much see you next week. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Doodles. Bye. Bye.